CataractCoach.com. Soft PSC Cataract and a 30-year-old. And this young resident does a great job with this tough case. This is a patient who's 30 years old and has been using corticosteroids for some systemic medical problems and has developed this cataract. So one paracetamol was made, and that was for the attending, for me, and then here's another paracetamol made by the resident. Notice how both incisions barely nick the limbal vessels. Of course, that's what we want. When you operate on a 30-year-old, your surgery has to last for 70 years. And by having incisions that barely nick the limbal vessels, you're going to get long-term sealing. That's fantastic. Now, tripan blue dye is used. Here's the viscoelastic now being going, you know, going in the eye. Why do you need tripan blue if there's such a good red reflex? Well, remember, another benefit of tripan blue dye is it also makes the lens caps a little less elastic. Here comes the main incision and a nice good tunnel length. I like it. Oh, it's a really nice incision. That's a beautiful job for this young patient. Great architecture. Look at that square incision. Very nice. Beautifully done. Here comes the rexus. Now, again, the capsule will be a little less elastic due to that tripan blue dye that went in the eye. And that's just a side effect that's very helpful for, uh, for us to uh, take advantage of. But otherwise, in a 30-year-old, this lens cap is going to be very elastic. It's very different than your average 60- or 70-year-old. So make sure you get a nice, good, secure capsule rex. So aiming for about a 5-millimeter capsule rexus. In a case like this, I'd err on the smaller side. So it's getting a little bit large, but I think we're still in that good zone. So okay to re-grab it, take your time, take, change the angle if you need to, and let's get this done. Now you think that's too small for rexus, but actually that's just about perfect. I bet you that's about 5.5 millimeters in diameter. So now this is not a posterior polar, but if it was a posterior polar, you have to be super cautious with hydro dissection. But here we don't have to worry about that. The fluid wave goes across. It'll go just fine. There'll be no issue there. And now the nucleus comes up out of the bag. Great idea. Get it out of the bag. Hydro delineate. Put lots of fluid there. A lot of look at all this hydro dissection. Fantastic idea. Why? This lens is soft, completely soft. You don't need phaco chop in this case. Look, you don't even need the phaco probe. Just placing the IA probe in the eye, the entire nucleus being removed just with the irrigation aspiration probe. There is essentially no nuclear density here. So removing all this lens material, that looks great. Taking your time. Good job here. And then we'll clean this up. Now, remember, young patients like this are almost guaranteed to get PCO, posterior capsule opacification. And that's likely going to happen in the first year after surgery, and that's due to the patient's age. Now, look at that posterior capsule was cleaned up beautifully with the IA probe. Nice and easy. That went in great. And now, not letting the eye collapse. That's a good move, too. I like that. Filling it up. Um, and now, placing in the lens. Redden's going to load up the lens here. Now, in a case like this, we want to be extra cautious. If the patient is very young. Remember, this patient doesn't have a PVD. And so, oh, by the way, what are we doing there? I'm using the, the um, spatula to polish the undersurface of the anterior lens capsule. So getting all that lens up the cell material off. You'll see it'll be clean at the end. But anyway, back to our thought here about PVDs. There is no PVD in this patient because the patient's so young. So the patient may develop a PVD in the post-op period because we've replaced that thick Four millimeter thick human lens has been replaced with a very thin, less than one millimeter thin IOL, and the vitreous can shift. So watch the patients carefully in the post op period, especially if they're young myopes. So now cleaning out that viscoelastic, you can see the lens caps looks a lot cleaner. So as the resident was loading the lens, I just used that spatula to polish the undersurface of that anterior capsular rim, and that looks great. Really cleaned up nicely. Now we're going to settle that lens up a little bit better. Incision, look at the outline of the incision. That looks great. This patient's going to have a beautiful long-term ceiling and a good um, incision there, really nice. And these young patients, we really have to spend the extra time to take pride in our work. There's the overlap. Look at that 360-degree overlap. Good job, young resident. Good overlap of the optic by that capsule rexus, all 360. The rexus does cover. It's about a 5.5-millimeter rexus, and it's beautifully centered. So I'll, I'll be impressed. I'm impressed. So I'm sealing up the incisions here. And guess what this young patient deserves? A suture, exactly. The resident here is going to pass a 10 nylon suture. And of course, for this case, we've sped the video up so we can get through the whole thing. But again, take your time on these cases. Let's watch the suturing technique. This is an important thing. 
The ability to suture with tenon nylon must be practiced before you come to the operating room. You can practice in the wet lab. You can just use the surgical microscope and sit there and suture a tomato skin or a grape skin. I don't mind. But you have to have the hands used to working under the microscope with tenon nylon. No one was born knowing how to suture with tenon nylon. It has to be practiced. If you're a basketball fan, this is the equivalent of your basketball free throw. You must be able to shoot 90% from the free throw line before you come to the big game. That's what you practice on your own. So this resident did a nice job. That's a pretty good suture. Nicely done. So certainly this resident has practiced. And of course, I encourage you to do the same. Rotating that in and a little bit of moxifloxin going in and centering the lens. That looks beautiful. So nice approach to a young 30-year-old patient with a soft posterior subcapsular cataract done by a young resident with great potential. Thank you for watching. Thanks for watching these videos. And remember to go to cataractcoach.com and sign up for a free daily email. We'll send you an email every day with a great video like this and other surgical pearls that'll make you a better surgeon.